Parks and Rec is about to get medically wrecked. Pee woo. Why is no one calling 911? Why do they think they could solve this? Like, this is an office issue. I was shot in the head with a shotgun. Ron, it's actually not that serious. I just need you to stay calm, okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna stay angry. I find that relaxes me. Okay, here's your scotch. Okay, Jerry, Jerry's here. You here's go. your scotch, Ron. There, there you go. go, Ron. Okay. Scotch can actually make you bleed more, so that's not something that we want. The pain medication I gave you is pretty strong. Donnie uses it for menstrual cramps. How many did you take? Seven, eight. Better wash them down with plenty of fluids. No, Ron, you cannot drink scotch with this. You're gonna need to purge right now. Pain medications, especially ones that include acetaminophen, aka Tylenol, with alcohol can be quite disastrous. In fact, one of the leading causes of acute liver injury happens to be Tylenol intoxication, whether on purpose or even by accident. I see it quite often when patients are like, oh, I took some Tylenol and then I took some Corsidin or NyQuil. These are all things that contain acetaminophen, but because they have different brand names, people don't realize it and they like get a toxic dose of Tylenol. We recommend ideally maxing out a 2,000 milligrams of Tylenol a day, but the max dose is 4,000. Hey, Anne, are you still a nurse or did they fire you because you slept with all the doctors? Whoa, someone belongs on Grey's Anatomy. Andy's not feeling well. What's wrong, Andy? Just got a headache and I'm seeing double and I got a song stuck in my head and my teeth hurt. Also, I'm... Hungry. Not gonna lie, most of my patient visits go exactly like this. For us doctors, we wanna address one concern at a time in order to give it adequate time and effort. But patients don't work by check boxes. So they tell you everything that's wrong with them and then we have to decide, is this all due to one cause or are we gonna take this apart in several visits? Did you hit your head? Yeah, he was hanging up his gold record. Oh my God, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Look to the left, the right, whatever. <laughs> the best fundoscopic exam I ever seen. You can't do a proper fundoscopic exam when the patient looks so far to the left and so far to the right, because you gotta look through the pupil. Well, if it's a concussion, it's extremely mild, so I wouldn't worry about it. Anything else bothering you? The way that I like to do it is say, okay, based on reason X, Y, and Z is why I don't think this is inherently dangerous right now. Things you need to be on the lookout for are X, Y, and Z. The patient can then understand why I'm making the recommendation to understand that if something changes that now is outside of my initial recommendation, they know when to come back. I've got a weird uh, rash in my knee pit. Sometimes when I walk, my ankles make like a weird rattle snake sound. I broke my thumb on the way over here. Whoa, that's a serious break. There's a lot of bruising. We made like a hundred million doctor's appointments for ourselves in one week. After this, we won't have to go to the doctor for like 10 years. That's not true. But seeing a family medicine doctor is really ideal because a lot of these problems are really not requiring the consultation with a subspecialist. We can handle them in family medicine. So Dr. Harris seems to be a lacking. Oh. Let's get you home and get me some ice cream. Here's your bill. Oh yeah, we won't be needing that. I've got the pre-medicine card. <laughs> Free uh, medicine card. Deductible for dental procedures. Oh, I think uh, you're wrong. We have the insurance thing. I believe we're covered. It's still five hundred dollars. You know what? Go, Dinah Dash. Out of the way! Wait, he got a dentist appointment, and then he's in an ICU all of a sudden. Where is he? Uh -oh. oh. I'm making the water fountain hygiene upgrade our number one priority. Oh, great. For some reason, when people in Pawnee use the water fountain, they put their mouths completely open. <laughs> Ew! Oh my God! That's my worst fear. Oh, it's a surefire way to get herpes, speaking of it. I have a hernia. Uh, this morning, I made the mistake of sneezing. <laughs> Oh, that looks like he has an inguinal hernia where intestinal contents actually go through the inguinal canal into your scrotum. That's right, you can end up with intestines in your scrotum. But as long as I sit still and don't move, I'm good, I got this. The most dangerous part about having a hernia is if it becomes strangulated, which means that within the opening that was created and that it went through, some kind of inflammation happens or stress happens where it starts getting choked out. And this choking out actually cuts off the blood supply to that part of the intestine, thereby causing it to necrose and die, which leads it to develop an infection. So a strangulated hernia is a surgical emergency.
That was actually really fun. But the best part about being an MRI technician is I can see inside everything. <laughs> you look inside the steak or this butter or this bread. Well, if you look inside this bread, all you're gonna find is more bread. I don't know, I'd have to do an MRI. <laughs> I mean, I've never even had an MRI before. What? Is he taking her to get an MRI in a claustrophobic, loud little space that you have to sit for long periods of time? Oh. I don't know about this. Well, I'm offering you a free scan. Usually costs up to $2,000. Free scans are not necessarily good scans. In our bodies, we have all sorts of little growths and differentiating markers. Some of these things go away. Some of these things aren't actually a problem. If we find them on imaging when we're looking for something else, we actually have a name for them called incidental omas. And these things are not usually meant to be found. Finding them just results in more scans, more radiation, more healthcare related anxiety, more testing that you don't need. And the reality of us actually trying to save your life by finding this thing are almost zero. How does that feel? Uh, weird. Perfect. <laughs> How about asking her if she has any metallic objects on her? Oh, so much can go wrong. You never had any kids, right, Leslie? No. You've got a great oven. Okay, time to go. You've got ample room in there. What is this even an image of? You got a big industrial sized oven. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling sweaty. Do I look sweat? I feel. Oh, I need to use the bathroom one more time. That's like five times in an hour. Well, somebody's nervous about the ceremony. Or he could have a UTI, causing him to have a fever, which is causing him to sweat, which is causing him to urinate quite often. Ben? Oh, oh my God. Uh, Can you stop? Uh, Are you okay? Uh, I think I'm giving birth. Kidney stone? Yep. Big sucker too. Big sucker. Size is one of the most important factors when we're looking at kidney stones to decide what to do moving forward. You know, lithotripsy is a really unique option where we can actually break up the stone while it's inside of you. But we could also go in and physically retrieve them. I want candy. What is he on? Morphine. It's good stuff. We could also give medications like Flomax, which can help in the passage of smaller stones. Ron, you've been sweating in here all day. Oh my God, why is everyone sick? Yes. Plenty. No, you need to drink water. Usually I take it neat, but I will make an exception in the name of health. <laughs> Last night I watched a movie with Diane and the girls in which an orange fish is separated from his father. The children were sniffling, which I believe to be due to the sad nature of the film. I was wrong. Kids are Petri dishes. They touch everything, they bring it right up to their noses, mouths, eat it, and then get sick and then pass it along to us. I'm a grown man. I have had a cold before, I need no help. So if you don't mind. Oh no, he fainted. Make sure that he has a pulse, otherwise start chest compressions. Before you begin, a few ground rules. I need you to explain everything you do before you do it so I can determine whether I will allow you up. It's funny, that's what I usually do with my patients. But the other day I had a patient who I was uh, draining an abscess off of his back, which means that it was like a pocket of pus, tennis ball size, almost like what you would see on Pimple Popper. And as I was doing it, because it was on his back, I wanted to narrate what I was doing before I did it so he would feel comfortable. He actually got mad at me multiple times. The first time he said, please stop telling me everything you're doing because it makes me feel worse. I apologized. And then when I realized he was taking it all along, I reassured him and said, everything's going well. And he reminded me, please stop telling me what you're doing. And I made the mistake and I apologized again. Mm. Ah, balsa wood? You could at least use mahogany. There's something occluding your ear. It's sawdust, just blow. <laughs> Why does he have sawdust in his ear, not earwax? You've got strep throat. Writing a prescription for penicillin. Why was he admitted into the hospital? A, for strep throat, and B, why in the world are his eyes so red for strep throat? Something doesn't add up. Hey, you look better. I guess actual medicine can be effective. Who to thunk? Please leave me alone. A lot of people don't realize this, but by taking antibiotics for strep throat, you only decrease the time that you have symptoms by about 16 hours. That whole, oh, I'd like to get antibiotics so I can get better for my trip thing, doesn't quite work. The only problem I see is that your potassium's low, so just eat a banana <laughs> once in a while. <sighs> ladies, ladies. <laughs> see how a gag reflex? What's happening? Oh, 
The ASMR of it all. <laughs> oh, that's disgusting. Let's go wait outside the bathroom for Tom and scare him. Ready and... No! <laughs> Jerry, God, gross. Guys, I... Oh god. Oh, I think he might be having a heart attack. And farting simultaneously? Medically speaking, how would you describe what happened to Jerry? He had a mild heart attack. Is there a term for having a heart attack while releasing so much gas? Not really. Gastrointestinal distress is common during a cardiac event. It's common during any stressful event, actually. That's why the term butterflies in my stomach exists. I just want to hear the doctor say that Jerry had a fart attack. Is that too much to ask? <laughs> you could just have said it yourself, my man. And if you're having a heart attack, the most important thing you can do is call 911 because the time that we have to save your heart that is not getting enough blood flow is limited. And if you're not getting there in time, we could actually lose parts of your heart, which then can lead to rupture of valves or walls of the heart. And obviously that could be lethal. If you're having chest pain, you're dizzy, it's radiating up, down, left, right, call 911. In fact, here's the recommended guidance from the American Heart Association. I'm just feeling really tired. I think maybe my allergies are acting up. I've already vomited like five times today. Vomiting can be a sign of anaphylaxis. That's something we don't talk about enough because people are saying, oh, I'm vomiting. That has nothing to do with allergies. It can be. From a skin allergy, very unlikely, just like a mild skin allergy. Oh my God. Oh my. Is, she, is she sick? Are you sick? No. Yeah, she's sick. That's why I'm wearing this and misting myself with hand sanitizer. Yeah, that doesn't work. And it kind of reminds me of the new Dyson product that I was just put out. I have questions about that thing. I'm getting better. All right, you're burning up. You're burning up. What? The fact that she's having multiple systems involved, watery eyes, runny nose, abdominal discomfort, vomiting, all of that point to the fact that it's a multi-system issue, likely to be a virus. Leslie, I, I typed your symptoms into the thing up here and it says you could have- Cancer. Network connectivity problems. <laughs> That's actually really funny. 104.1. That's high. Leslie, you're dehydrated, I'm admitting you. Well, <laughs> Temperature is not correlated to dehydration. If she checked her skin turgor or evaluated her lips being very chap or checked if she was tachycardic, all those things can point to dehydration. In fact, there's something we can note on the chart, dry MM, which means dry mucous membranes. It's food poisoning. I have it too. I did not sleep for one second last night. Did they vomit? They cracked the bottom of the toilet bowl. Oh God, don't say that. It's important that if you have food poisoning that you don't take motility slowing drugs like Imodium because your body's trying to get rid of the toxin and by slowing down the motility of the intestines, you can actually keep that toxin in longer, creating a bigger problem. Warning signs in your stool that you could have a really bad infection. Blood, mucus, changes in your stool caliber, fever, worsening lower abdominal pain. The blood is, is one of the main ones though. All right, uh, moving on to recycling. Um, you okay, Ron? Just a little tooth pain. I'm fine. Do you need to go to the dentist, Ron? I don't like dentists. Just a second. Hey! Oh, no, no. No, 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 Don't extract your own tooth. No. Where's the jack? Dentist pulled the tooth out yesterday. But it's always a good idea to demonstrate to your coworkers that you are capable of withstanding a tremendous amount of pain. Why did he have to have a healthy tooth extracted? Could have just get a root canal. Check out what happens when a doctor lies. Click here to check that out. Crazy patient story. As always, stay happy and healthy.